Chapter 2 is all about things you can do to a particular geometric shape. And when you do these things to the shape, which we're going to learn about in this chapter, you form things that are called congruent figures. And congruent figures have the same shape and size. So you see in this picture, they've identified the matching angles, the corresponding angles, same position in different um, shapes, by using this arc right here. Um, and you could do two arcs and two arcs and three arcs and three arcs, and you would use various number of arcs to represent which angles are congruent. And also they've used colors, which you obviously can't see on your worksheet, but on the video here, you can see that the colors note which sides are congruent as well. Now before we move on to the example one down below, I want to show you the symbol for congruent. Now you might have learned this before, but if you didn't, that's okay, here it is. It's an equal sign, and then it's got like a squiggle at the top. So that's the symbol for congruent. So I'm going to use that when I write instead of using the phrase is congruent to. Alright, here we go, example one. Once you identify the two shapes are congruent, then the next thing is to identify the parts. So I'm just going to draw a little line down there to separate because if you read the directions, it says that they want the angles and the sides. So I'll put the angles here and the sides over here. So uh, I'll start with angle one. And another symbol that you may or may not know already is the angle symbol. So it's kind of like a less than symbol, but it's flat on the bottom. It's not slanted like a less than symbol would be. So I'll write angle A, and then I'll use that symbol that we just talked about, is congruent to. And now you want to look at the shape and say what angle in the other polygon is in the same position as A. And that's angle W. Okay, if you want to pause the video right now, Go ahead and do the other three on your own, or you can continue with me. Angle B is congruent to angle X. Angle C is congruent to angle Y. And angle D is congruent to angle Z. And that's it. Let's go over to do the sides. When you do the sides, um, you start off with any side. So again, we'll start off simple. We'll go side AB. And the way that you use the symbol for side is you put a little line segment at the top. That tells you that you're talking about the side of the shape named AB. And then we've got our congruent symbol. And you can either say that AB is congruent to WX or XW, but if you start with A, since A matches W, then people would want you to write WX. It's not really geometrically wrong if you write XW, but nobody, no mathematician ever does it like that. If you want to pause the video, go ahead and do the next three on your own. I'll go just in order, BC. Side BC, don't forget the segment, is congruent to side XY. Then I've got side CD is congruent to side YZ. And side DA is congruent to ZW. How you'll know when two shapes are congruent will be when their corresponding angles, and you see this is what I was talking about earlier with the one, the two, and the three, so you could tell which angles are congruent, and also the sides are congruent as well. So all angles and all sides are congruent to each other. That's what makes shapes congruent to each other. So we've got this picture of three squares, and so obviously if they're all squares and they all have 90 degree angles, um, but we wanna look for two shapes being congruent, and they have to not only have the angles the same, which in this case they all do, but they also have to have their sides the same. Now, this is the first time where when we look at shapes that are congruent, and hopefully you pick square A and C, 
they're not facing the same direction. In example one, I intentionally made those quadrilaterals face the same direction. But congruent shapes don't always face the same direction. So you can't just look at a picture and say, oh, well, since these are both pointed in the same direction, they must be the congruent ones. Um, you have to look for the equivalent sides. So square A and square C. Okay, if you want to try example three on your own, go for it. If not, let's do it. They tell us that the two trapezoids are congruent, so they have the same angles and the same sides. What is the length of JM? So you look for JM, and JM is here, and its matching side is AD, so the length of AD must be the same as the length of JM, so that's 10 feet. And the perimeter of the JKLM must be the same as the perimeter of ABCD if the two shapes are congruent. So let's see, that's um, 10, 18, 24, 32, 32 feet. If you have any questions, write them down and ask me when you see me next.